Hi guys, glad to be back with you again this week. This week I am, as I'm recording this video, I am in a beautiful hotel in Lochern in Ireland where I've travelled to come and see um, one of my really lovely friends and mentors. And it was it's a wonderful experience being here today because the last time I was here was about four years ago and I literally turned up had managed somehow to white knuckle my way through the airplane flight, terrified in the airport with just the space and the noise and the bustle, and I didn't really know, I couldn't find a seat in the corner to go and just sit and hide, and I spent most of the time waiting in the toilets because at least I was safe there. And I arrived here and I just collapsed in a puddle of tears, and it was like, I can't do this anymore, I can't live like this anymore. It was horrible, horrible, horrible place to be and it's so nice to come back here now and have the experience of noticing I had no thinking about anything as I walked through the airport in a relaxed way did what normal people do in an airport wandered around bought a bit of stuff sat down over here did not cross my mind to consider how far away how big a space I was in where the nearest exit was um whether I was able to get my hands on migra leave if I needed them for my headaches. Um, no fear of being on the plane in that enclosed space where you just can't get off. That used to be terrible for me. And that sense of freedom that comes when this understanding gets into your bones and it the insight fairies have done their work and, and are continuing to do their work. And we see more and we have insight. So I just wanted to kick off that with that because again, I think like staying in this, staying in this journey and seeing there is hope, you know, that, that you can move through this experience is so wonderful to hear when you're struggling. But this week's topic I wanted to talk to you about was actually about being in the unknown. And that very word probably strikes fear into the hearts of many of you, I'm sure. So what I'm pointing to here is our, when we have anxiety, we have this almost like, and this might resonate with you, this almost like control freaky sense of needing to know exactly how the day is going to pan out, exactly how, uh, those of you who run businesses, exactly how the year is going to plan out, right? exactly um if you've got something coming up next weekend like who's going to be where when in what minute how the whole day is going to run my guess is your weekends you probably have if you're a woman reverse this if you're a man but if you're a woman you probably have a completely chilled out husband who may well have been at work all week and just wants to chill out and relax and just to have a bit of spontaneity and relaxation and relax over the weekend and my guess is that you by Thursday night, you have a plan for every single minute of the weekend, right? <laughs> you know, you can share with me in the Facebook group if this resonates with you. And there's that kind of tightness and control freakery because we, well, how else are you supposed to navigate your life unless you organize it, right? Like how else is stuff going to happen? How else will you have a sense of certainty about like the, the, the right stuff's going to get done at the right time? And that you can relax because you've got everything planned, so now you can relax, right? That's why when we micromanage, that's why we do it. It's like I think if I if I plan everything out to the smallest detail, then I can relax because I know it's being taken care of because I've done my job and it's take, it's it's going to be taken care of. But then in the back of the mind, there's always the little worries about what if it doesn't go the way that I want it to and what if, you know, and then you get a phone call from an aunt or an uncle who wants to come around and visit and it throws your whole day out. So there's a completely different way of navigating our lives. And when we're operating in the way I've just described, it's like we're trying to run our lives using the hard drive on our computer. So we try and get all the information that we know. So say, for example, I was talking to someone last week about taking a trip down to London from where she lives. And so she would plan every last little move and turn 
from her house to the station to the station, what time trains, when she got out the train, you go left, right, which turnings, which roads, check it all out, like, you know, every, every last little detail of where she was going. And that's using your hard drive, right? So that's going into your brain and working out all of the different permutations and trying to figure it out. And if you know, don't know there's any other way of navigating life, then that's our go-to. That's what we're taught to do in school, right? Is store information and then use that information and recall it and organize it in a way. And then that's how we move forward with decisions in life. But there is an alternative. And there is a way of moving about in the world where you are consistently stepping out into the unknown, where you're able to wake up in the morning and say, I have no idea what the day holds. Now that used to fill me with terror. That made school holidays really, really hard for me because I'd wake up in the morning. Well, actually I wouldn't because I would have every day of every, um, every minute of every day pretty much planned through my kids' school holidays because the thought of waking up in the morning and having an empty day would make my palms sweat while I was still lying in bed that morning. It's like, what am I gonna do all day? What am I gonna do with them? How am I gonna keep them entertained? What's there's no plan for today and I would be and then I'd have a lot of guilt and self-recrimination because I felt really bad about spending time with my kids so the guilt was piled on top of all of that and the ticker tape was going on and on and on and what I see now is there is so much beauty and all the good stuff comes in the unknown in the spontaneity and responding to what shows up in life in not having such a fixed and rigid plan and here's why we have this little fixed rigid plan about how the day is going to pan out or how life has to be or what's going to happen today and we hold that all so tightly and that comes from our personal thinking like our small little personal minds it's the best we've got but what you're starting to see as you come through this program now is that we have access to this huge infinite resource like the back office i've talked about it in other in other calls mind which is a completely different way of navigating through life. And our mind, common sense, wisdom, is a moment-to-moment -moment experience of what to do next that's so subtle and gentle that we're not aware of it. We talked about it before, about like knowing when to go to the toilet, knowing when to get a, a glass of water. And there's... When we navigate by that, it's like using, and the best metaphor I've ever heard for it is, like, we've got a GPS, right? Like, when you when you follow your sat-nav or your GPS, and you want to go to a particular place in a particular restaurant in London, yes, it'll give you the overall view of the, of the direction you're going in, but it will course correct. So it will tell you the first turning out of your driveway, right? It'll say, go left down here and then go right. Maybe it'll tell you two steps, but that's it. And you take those two steps and then it kind of assesses all the traffic and the obstacles and the, the, the spontaneous pedestrians that step into the road. And it'll, it'll say, right, now go right. So then you go right. And then you might come up against um, like a road that's blocked with some roadworks. And it'll take a while and it'll reroute, 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 make a U-turn, right? And it'll tell you to go back and then to go left. And every single moment, it's constantly readjusting without you having to do anything to the GPS, right? You don't have to press any buttons. You don't have to program it. You don't have to work out what it's going to say next. You don't have to keep checking the end destination. You rely on the fact that moment to moment is going to readjust and it's going to tell you the next turn. Like just the next turn. Now, if you're operating from your little bank of files, the minute you get to that blocked road, you're, you're screwed, right? You don't know where to go. You throw yourself up into a panic. This wasn't what was planned and I need to know the way. And chances are you'll probably end up turning around and just going back home, right? If this was a real life situation. But when we've got a GPS to guide us, that's, that's internal to us. It sits within us. You can never the good thing about it as opposed to a GPS it's like you can't ever put it down and lose it right if it's on your phone you can't ever be without it it's it's 
an innate resource that we have access to. It's something we're actually made of, so we can never leave it behind. It's ours. And so when I first heard about, and this goes back to the, if you want to go back and listen, the module to go back and listen to is the you're not in control. But when we see that, we don't really know where we're going in life. But what we know is that if we continue to follow the sat nav, we won't really much care. We'll end up somewhere, but we'll have an experience of the journey that's just free and calm and full of joy and love and connection and crap stuff as well, because that's what happens in our human life. But here it's really important that we know where we're going, we get to our goal, we do the thing, we have control. And over here, we can let that go because our moment to moment of experience, when we're connected to the, the present moment, because we don't need to be doing all that future planning in our heads all the time. When you see that this has got your back, this shows you where to go next. You don't have to future plan all the time. When that falls away, you're in the present moment. And whenever we fall back into the present moment, we're connected to mind and thus the gold dust of life. That's those moments when you are feel a connection to something deeper than yourself. That you get a sense of the oneness of all things. That you get filled up with joy and you're touched by life with whatever's in front of you right now in this moment. And you start to see and you start to understand through this conversation that like over here, it looked really important that you get back to work or that you are able to take your kids out or that you're able to achieve a particular goal. And over here, it's all about the game of living, right? It's like, how do you have a wonderful experience of being alive in the moment that's what we're exploring in this conversation and when you know that and you know that your 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 well-being does not depend on you being able to get to a certain place achieve a certain thing or have a certain thing then it doesn't matter too much where you end up so you're able to just relax into that moment to moment to moment to moment guidance experience one of my mentors once said to me, do you know what, Nick, it's, it's possible to live a life without thought. Now, that's not true because we can't experience life. We wouldn't have an experience of being alive without thought. But what he meant, what he was pointing to, is it's possible to live a life without having to do any of this at all, Nick. That you can relax into the moment, you can step into the unknown. And when we open... There are little opportunities and possibilities and things that are right in front of us that when we're so narrow minded and focused in this direction, we don't even see. There are opportunities to find work that suits you. There's opportunities to see something fascinating about your kids that's really helpful or someone that you're, that you're, you're struggling working with or there's insights, opportunities, possibilities, all of which happen when we relax into this space and know that we're being taken care of. There's a wonderful quote by Caitlin Moran in one of her books that I'll post below this video as well that just I think is so helpful to know that we always know what to do in the next minute. Now, is there a place for planning? Right? This is sometimes what people say. Is there a place for planning? Two questions come up normally. Is there a place for planning? Well, I'll come to the other question in a minute. And the answer, it looks to me in this moment and ask me again in a year and I may say something completely different. But it looks to me that, I mean, I still make plans. I still have, like, I love making plans. It's really good fun. And I, and I make a plan. Sometimes, sometimes I feel called by wisdom to just, like, make a plan. Write down your to-do list. Do, like, and in that moment, I follow wisdom in that moment. I do it and my thinking falls away. And then I'm left to get on and play with life. And it, chances are I never do what's actually on the plan, right? But it doesn't matter because before I thought it mattered, I did what was on the plan, but now it doesn't. And, and I notice 
I make far fewer plans. So I'll go into a weekend. And if there are some logistics that need juggling with three kids and a husband and various animals and all the rest of it, then yeah, I'll kind of come up with an idea to make sure that everything gets done. But I hold it so much more loosely now. I'm not anal about it. I'm not driving my husband batty by micromanaging every minute of the day. And the second question that often comes up with this, and I may have answered this in a previous module, but it does come up again and again, and you might hear it different this time, is, well, if it's not all about planning and trying to achieve the thing that I think I need in order to be happy, like, how, how, do, you, how do you decide to do anything? Do you just sit around on the sofa just being happy? Like, that doesn't sound particularly appealing. In fact, most of you are sitting around on your sofa wishing you could do more, right? And how I see it is, and, you know, one of my mentors, George Pransky, describes this so beautifully, is that we have this game of living, right? Which is which is what, what we're engaged in this conversation. It's like, how do we have a, a more wonderful experience and connected experience to life right in this moment, regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of our past, regardless of our future, regardless of our health, regardless of our money, regardless of whether we're working, regardless of other people's behavior, regardless of all of that underneath. Like, how do we have a more amazing experience of life? And on top of that, when we have this foundation, this foundational piece shifts, we're free to go out and play whatever game of life we want. And for some of that, us, that's creating businesses. For some, it's families. For some, it's travel. For some, it's writing books. For some, it's just having an ordinary life and going out and being able to spend time with your grandkids or go to the supermarket, right? And we get to play whatever game of life we want to just because we can, not because we have to in order to be okay, but just because we can, just because we want to, just because it's our heart's desire, just because, just because we can. And that's great. And it's arbitrary. And you can pick any game of life, you, you know, you want to go play. Once you, you, you see more about the truth in the game of living and that settles down, all of this gets easier. And that's why this conversation isn't about how to get a better business, how to have better relationships with your husband, how to do all of this stuff. Because from a different foundation, like you'll know what to do to play in any of these games of life with so much more clarity when your busy mind settles down. Busy mind, anxiety, the two words are interchangeable. It's just the same thing. When we understand the game of living, we have moments where all that quiets down. We have more and more moments where that quiets down. And our game of life just gets so much easier. So this week's all been about stepping into the unknown. And it's not a case of, okay, I'll try it. It's the case of like, the more in this conversation, the more you'll notice, like I noticed that I could show up to the airport. I could show up and respond to what turns up. I didn't have to plan my way through. I don't have to look up a map of the airport and work out where the toilets were before I got here. Right. I didn't have to know what gate number it was. I didn't have to know. Like I showed up and then I responded to what showed up in front of me. Full stop. God, it's so much easier being in life from this space. So share with me what you see in the Facebook group as ever. Um, I'd love to get your feedback on this one and I will speak to you again next week.